forms of assistance. And so, Sabrina, you mentioned the SBA. Um, SBA is a small business administration. Um, what they, they do have a disaster relief loan program that they've enacted. Uh, what happens is, and what's already happened in North Carolina is our governor has declared a state of emergency. And when that happens, that gives business owners access to the disaster loan fund with the SBA. So you can apply directly with them. And that's the Small Business Administration. Their whole goal and purpose is to support small businesses who of course, you know, employ half of this nation. They, they, they want you to stay in business. Everybody wants uh -huh. you to continue to pay your uh -huh. payroll and your employees um, and, to, and to be in good standing. So right. you can go online and you can do that. What they're offering right now is loans uh, for a business, 3.75%, for nonprofits, 2.75%. So these are good rates. These are, you know, for a loan, they're great rates, but it's still debt. It's still debt. It's, right. it's still money that you have to pay back. Um, so just, you know, if you need it, get it, but just proceed with caution. Try not to spend it uh, all right away, because again, we don't know how long this is going to last. So if you can get relief, on the front end, personally, and business expenses and fixed costs. Um, I hate to say it, but it's happening. If you if you need to temporarily lay people off, um, you know we'd rather you do that and be able to rehire than go out of business and then everybody's at a loss. So make the adjustments and cuts that you can. Um, get that relief, and then if you need to borrow money, you know do so, but do it cautiously. Um, <clears throat> the state, well, we had like Hurricane Matthew, Hurricane Florence, grant funds did come, but they came much later, right? And mm -hmm. so I haven't seen yeah. anything related to grant funding yet. Uh, mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that it won't come, but um, it, I have not heard that yet. The, uh, the bill that you've heard about on the news, been watching the news and Democrats and Republicans are fighting and it's aid package and this and that. So um, there's about $300 billion in that bill for small businesses. But again, that's going to be loans, low interest mm -hmm. loans. So it sounds good on the news when they're saying, we care about small business. We're, you know, mm -hmm. we're gonna keep you guys mm -hmm. working, da, 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 da. But you rarely hear them say, they 300 billion in loans. <laughs> they just stop it. We're doing 300 billion dollars. Yes, but that's yeah. money that you're going to have to pay back. So just be very cautious of that um, and, and borrow if you need it, but try to not to spend it unless it's, you, you, you're really in a tight space. All right, ladies, we're opening the floor for any additional questions before we start to wrap it up. I did see one. She said, how long, how long should you should you've been building credit or be in business before applying for a loan? So basically kind of like how, what's a good time frame to, to ask for a business loan? That, that really depends on your business. I will say to get the cheapest money, meaning to get the lowest interest rate, you'll want to be in business for at least three years, right? Then you're, then you're looking at, uh seven percent eight percent money um if you're trying to borrow money to start your business you're going to be looking at a, a good rate would be somewhere around 12 to 13 percent mm -hmm. right so it just depends and, and that's 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 going to one of these cdfis or local mission focused lenders if you're going to take money from lending tree or this or that to start your business you're going to be looking at a rate much higher so it just all depends on where you need the money uh, when you need it where you need it and what you need it for uh, the best time but the cheapest cheapest money is going to come when you've been in a business at least three years showing a profit gotcha okay so i mean but what if like your business like you can't even start it because you don't have the money that's when maybe an investor would be good yes so okay. if you're if you're <laughs> at a place where you're getting started and you know again you've got the greatest idea yeah you know, but your funds a little dry funds a little dry <laughs> you don't have the money that you need to start the business you you're you're gonna start with and i know i mean people say this all the time like oh get money from friends and family but all of us don't have 
that yeah. rich uncle or rich aunt that we can go to and right. get money from. So that's not even an option most times. But and so if, if, if the personal savings are not there and you don't have that friends and family round that you can do, I would say at least make the ask because any lender that comes at that next stage is going to ask you, have you tried to raise money from your friends and family? And so you at least want to be able to say, yes, I've done that. Um, and then crowdfunding. If you can do a Kickstarter or a campaign, anything mm. you can do to draw attention to your business, uh, but that will also help you raise money, that crowdfunding campaign, lenders will count that as your equity injection. So if you can raise that $10,000, raise $5,000, what have you, they will count that as your personal injection into the business. Um, so that, that's something that you can do. And then your investors, you know, if you've got to start going to these pitch competitions, seeing if you can, you know, 2,500 here, 5,000 here to pull it together, do that. Go to the session or, or the next, um, the webinar that Sabrina is doing about learning how to pitch, get that story yes. down pat, get that 30 second, five minute elevator pitch so that you can pitch your business, try to get money there. And then if it comes to the point where you're looking for an investor, um, again, know your numbers, know the financial uh, projections, what you believe that business can produce so that you can then sell it. But you've got to start off knowing what your business is worth so that you make sure you're not getting ripped off by investors, right? right? You're not giving away too much of your business and in the terms that they want that money back, that they're not going to choke the cash of the business. So you've right. got to start with that financial piece. So um, someone asked, this is a good question, Jakia, do you have to have a solid business plan before starting a business or applying for a business loan? Because I can tell you, be real honest with y'all, I don't have a business, have a business plan. I have two businesses, one that is nine years old, the other one that is about to be three, and I do not have a business plan, and I don't know if that is part of the reason why I really haven't been able to like fully prevail to the level I want to stay on or not, um, so I just kind of shy away whenever people start talking about business plans because they seem super stressful, but do you mm -hmm. think that that helps you kind of just structure your business or actually are lenders actually looking for business plans these days? Um, most lenders, if you're a startup, they are still going to ask for that business plan. Okay. But I will say as time and technology have changed, um, it can look, it can come in different forms. So your business plan can be a really informative and tight deck like a, yeah. a PowerPoint deck presentation. I got that. <laughs> okay, you're on your way. You, you're on your way then. Uh, so, you know, you don't need a business plan to start the business, especially if it's something, again, that you can um, take your, your dream up here and bring it to a step one here. Yeah. Um, no, honestly, cash flow is king. If you can prove that you can make money and generate cash without that business plan, then you've got something there. Proof of concept is worth more than a full, proof of concept is worth more than a 30 page business plan. Okay. <laughs> if you can show that your idea, your product, your service can generate money, um, you, you now got into the next step, but really that business plan is more so for, for you to know where you're headed, who's going to be at the table, who your team is, who you're after. So if you can speak to all of that without your business plan, some lenders may be not so concerned. You got great credit and you got stellar credit. <laughs> you're going to personally guarantee you're going to keep your job, you know, and those other things are in place. That business plan may not mean, you know, mean as much because at that point you're showing you can afford the debt, whether the business makes it or not. Does that make sense? Yeah. The more reliant you repaying your debt is on the business the better that business plan better be <laughs> but if you if you can show that you can afford you know fifty thousand dollars forty thousand dollars and you can afford to pay that back without the help of the business mm -hmm. then you know you're good but if, if if you need to make the money from that business to pay back yes. the debt then your business plan better be tight nice all right, ladies, it's eight o'clock. Um, 
Amber, do you have any um, parting words or suggestions or tips or anything that you want to leave us with? Um, I, I would just say, you know, I just, well, I, you know, I think I mentioned to you, Spring, I just want to encourage you all. I mean, I know we're in uncertain times. I know we're in tough times, but you're going to fall into one of two categories, right? Either you're a person who has been around the block a few times and you've been through your fair share of hardship and you can say to yourself, hey, look, I've been down before. I'm going to make it through this, right? Or you're a person, maybe this is the toughest thing you've ever faced, Um and, and you're a little bit nervous about the outlook, just know you'll make it to the other side. This is, mm -hmm. this is where prevailing comes into play. This is where we have to pull up our big girl panties, cry if you have to, yes. scream if you have to, but get up off that floor and do what you have to do. And you can do it. Show yourself what you're made of. This is your time. Don't quit. You didn't hear God wrong. Keep going. Keep going. Don't quit. You need to pivot. Pivot, okay? I was working <laughs> on my hair the other day. It didn't turn out right. I had to pivot. <laughs> had to turn it into something else. You pivot. You pivot and you put your edges down and you keep going, honey. Keep going. You you can do it. Just be encouraged. You're, you know, you're in this. All of us are in the same fight together. And I've seen so many um, organizations and businesses that have come together, even in the yes. Durham community that yes. are really just trying to share information, stay, stay in touch, uh, find that, find that in, I know we have a lot of states represented on this call, find that in your community because business owners are pulling together like never before and trying to maintain a sense of community. Um, and so stay on these chats. There's all kinds of webinars and calls. Sabrina has been a you know, pioneer of this. I think she was probably the first one that I saw to try and put together um, Look, I was like, cats and dogs. I was like, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, really, you know, you pioneered this yeah. and there are so many others that are, that are doing it as well. Get on those calls because there's great information that's being circulated, but just mm -hmm. keep your ear to the, keep your ear to the, um, to the waves and, and staying um, abreast of what's going on. Get that relief personally and, and professionally, wherever you can contact Contact your vendors, contact your suppliers, contact your lenders, and ask for that relief. Um, and just keep going. Just keep going. So really quickly, too, I have like two announcements. Um, the first one, I um, connected with someone who works um, in like the corporate LinkedIn offices. Um, she reached out to me today, and she has two premium LinkedIn um, free membership accounts for yes. I think it's two years. Um, so she asked me, did I have anyone um, like in my prevailing woman network that um, has recently lost a job and laid off, furloughed, whatever the case may be. Um, if, you, if you don't know, um, the premium account through LinkedIn gives you opportunity to hear about job announcements, um, talk directly with recruiters. You can put your resume up there. I personally found my job that I had at social services, which was an amazing job, um, going on LinkedIn. Like Indeed and all those are great, um, I don't have a problem with them, but I think LinkedIn is a little bit more real time. These are the actual people that do the hiring or can put you in those positions. Um, so I spend more time on LinkedIn than I do on some of these <laughs> other platforms, to be honest. I check it first before anything else. I'm on LinkedIn because you just it's continuous good information. So if anybody reaches out to me like in the next like 15, 20 minutes that is on the call today that um, that is actually, that has lost a job and is in a job search um, situation, please just shoot me an email. You have my information. If not, I am going to go ahead and blast it out. We have like over 500 women signed up for these things. So it's only two that I can give away. So it's just going to be to the first two people that reach out to me. Um, so I did want to offer that to you all because you're on the call tonight. Um, and the second thing is that we do, we're going to keep this party moving. Wednesday night, we're going to be talking about how to work your side hustle while maintaining your main hustle. Most of the ladies in here have numerous jobs. We wear numerous hats. Um, so whether your side hustle is your actual small business and your main hustle may be you're a stay-at-home mom or you just have multiple kids or you have multiple pets and, or you have multiple jobs, whatever the case may be. You just, we, we wear a lot of hats. So I think the 
conversation will be good to anyone, even if you are only in one business or one job, but it can prepare you for the future. Um, because unfortunately, we live in a society where we kind of have to do two or three things just to stay, right. keep our head above the water. Um, so um, please join us. That's going to be Wednesday. That is going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so I hope that you all can join us. 7 p.m. Tends, tends to be our shebang, but I hope y'all can break away from work um, for your lunch break and eat and chat with us at one o'clock. Um, and other than that, thank y'all so much for hanging with me. As you see, I try to change up my background a little bit. Um, I'm gonna change up the color on y'all on Wednesday though, okay? <laughs> thank y'all so much. I appreciate you for being with us, Amber, today um, and taking time out of your evening. I truly appreciate it. And I will talk to you all later. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>